Hi, and welcome back to Art Laughs with me, Verity Babs. Today, I spoke to Pope Lonergan. I'm here today with Pope Lonergan. Pope, please introduce yourself. I'm Pope Lonergan. I'm a comedian, a Quaker, a drug addict, recovering drug addict, thank God, a writer, and I used to work in elderly care. So that's something I kind of talk about a lot in my stand up and writing and that. You have chosen a piece which makes me not want to ask you why have you picked it, but but why, why for the love of God have you picked it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's yeah, it's Paul uh, Paul McCarthy, not McCartney. Paul McCarthy, uh, and I think it was Bossy Burger. I think was mm-hmm. the one I, I, I sent you, um, which isn't actually my my favourite piece. It was just it was the, the one I could find on YouTube that I thought was most representative of uh, uh, what what Paul McCarthy does and what I like about it. So it, he it's perf- it's visual. Is uh, he makes films, but he also makes sculptures as well. Like he did a load of sculptures that were uh, butt plugs made out of chocolate and that type of stuff. Very scatological, all about kind of biological spillage, excess, uh, the grotesque um, and, and things like that. But then there's a, a, a trickster quality to one of his works as well, which I wanted to find this clip. It's like two little Pinocchio looking people running in to an art gallery obviously this is all uh, stuff that he he orchestrated but the, i think the gallery were unaware that this was going to happen it was like it, it, it was a happening like a situation is happening and they ran in and uh, they start fucking about in the art gallery and then the the security come in and like try and bundle them over and try and get these little gnome fellas out of the <laughs> art gallery um and uh, yeah, that that kind of uh, that mischief and, and and pure, it's all quite puerile, uh, mm. which is I, I, as a comedian, I've I've got a weakness for puerility and uh, uh, yeah, just <laughs> scatological stuff. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and I, I think that's a recurring trope. Sounds so wanky saying a recurring trope within my own work. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I love like, it. I'm here <laughs> for it. Do it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, that, those ideas of uh, of, of excess and um, uh, and the grotesque, uh, mm. I find uh, I, f- I find I find fascinating, but also find them life affirming and progressive in a weird kind of way. What did you think of the work, Verity? <laughs> this is the first time that I'd seen this particular video. I've seen other bits of McCarthy's work where it similarly has this <laughs> this feeling of you're not meant to watch them and feel comfortable, right? I can't remember exactly where it was, but it was a McCarthy video showing in one of those little dark rooms they have in a gallery. And and most people kind of nip in for a minute, see that it was weird as fuck, <laughs> and then <laughs> leave again. And there's something quite... It's interesting you say life-affirming, because there is something quite... So it's hard to describe, but quite awakening and sort of aware of yourself to make yourself watch this even though everything yeah. about <laughs> everything in your body is telling you to just leave it alone. So in Bossy Burger, essentially, I'll throw up some screenshots and also a link in the, uh, the comments where you can watch this on YouTube. But basically a guy with a chef's hat on is doing some drawings and kind of constantly asking you what it is, and laughing. And at one point he sort of punches his hand through a wall and it's just all really uncomfortable. And these sort of clown like figures with prosthesis prosthesis i think that's the right word for, for prosthetics um yeah prosthetic yeah. yeah and and it's just very uncanny and this thing of they refer to it in uh, like surrealism as this idea of the abject so things that you do not want to look at are things that you're like like you say scatological stuff is abject uh, human you know human cadavers are abject things that make you want to like your brain is telling you not to look at it, basically. Yeah, I, 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 that's exactly it. That, that, the abject, which is, yes, a, a, a thing I'll return to time again. And it is this, like, the viscera and the potency of, of, of that kind of stuff. And obviously you've got the... that He's wearing, like, a mask, isn't he? It's sort of an Alfred P. Newman, like, Mad Magazine-type looking mm. face. Um, and there's... So, so the, the reason I say is... It, 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 you can it can have a um it, it can you can use it for progressive ends for instance is 
I worked in elderly care for about nine years. There's a profusion of, of piss and shit and everything <laughs> spilling out of these people. Yeah. It's, the, it's the vagaries of aging. We don't want to confront it, but that is what happens. And I, 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 don't, I don't say that to demean these people or to strip them of their dignity or anything like that. I say it to actually try and normalise it in a weird way. Like mm. I want... So what I think happens is that when... Especially when it comes to elderly care and stuff, is that people aren't inured to 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 that stuff to to you know to to the, the, the piss and the shit involved in aging. Uh, so when they're confronted with it, they 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 look away. They want to look away. They don't they don't want to have to deal with it. And when they look away, that can lead to neglect. That can lead to deprivation. Um, and if if you actually show people it and you represent it and there's a certain amount of verisimilitude to, to the representation, then it's preparing them uh, for, for, for this thing they have to actually deal with. And that's why like, so I'm, I'm writing, I'm going to uh, slip this in, uh, casual, try and be casual about it. I'm writing a book, a memoir for Penguin uh, about elderly care, funny memoir, elderly care, comedy and my drug abuse and that. And I said, I think that was one of the justifications uh, I, I had for, um, you know, you writing about the more, I mean, of, of course, it would be like tender and heartfelt, mm-hmm. but then writing the, the more um, uh, corporeal uh, parts of, uh, of aging. And, uh, and there's bits in the book as well, like I've just written a bit about, I mean, this is fucking, I, I've, had my, I've had about seven breakdowns. I've had my fair share of breakdowns <laughs> in my life. Just wall-to-wall breakdowns. I'm all right now. You've had but your share through. and someone else's share. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. You've done your time. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've done my time. It's out of my system. I got it out. I got it out. <laughs> um, there was this Howard Hughes thing of like when he, he you know, he, he, he had a breakdown, closed himself in a room, uh, they played the same film on repeat and then just had like glasses of, of piss all around him. Right. And I get it because I went through a stage of like, I, I lived in a house that was a rundown house and, you know, peel it, curling corners of linoleum on the floor and rotting skirting boards and, uh, you know, fucking internet wires, like ground vines or something. Mm-hmm. It's just, just shit abject house. And I didn't ever want to leave my room. So I took to filling up two litre, empty two litre bottles of Diet Coke with piss and not like, basically hoarding piss and not even discarding of the piss. But then the weird thing was when people would come round, rather than me like being ashamed of the big fat bottles of piss, my opening gambit and like welcome to my home would be to go, look, there's a massive bottle of piss there. Have you <laughs> noticed my big bottle of piss? <laughs> And uh, and as if it was like a, just like a, a nice feature that tied the room together, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the kind of madness involved in in doing that kind of stuff. And I remember a situation where that happened, and like people would come back to to do drugs mainly, and uh, like someone said, "Oh my god, like is that is that piss?" And like my other mate, like, well, like what the what the fuck are you doing? And then there was like a palpable pause, and then I just went. Oh no, it's fine. I'll 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 get rid of the piss. And then just gently stacks these big like mustard torpedoes of two liter bottles of piss just <laughs> gently in my cupboard. But at that point, one people made them you know made made it known that they're uncomfortable with the piss. I should have just got rid of the piss, but I didn't. I then stored the piss away in the wardrobe. It's, it's like <laughs> it's, it's like when artists have a bad like a, a certain audience doesn't like the work they've done and they're like, well, yeah. you just don't understand good art. Someone else will like you'll take, <laughs> you'll take the piss bottles out and someone else will be like, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, my friend! <laughs> what a party trick! <laughs> I think it's really interesting because, like we're talking about, bodily functions are something that essentially the art gallery and the art world want to imagine doesn't exist, right? Like mm. when you walk into a gallery, there's a reason why it's super quiet, and there's a reason why, like, the toilets are rarely like in the middle of the exhibition, and you know, yeah. we're kind of there as you know floating brains and eyes and our body just has to like take us there right and it's interesting watching these videos because there is something really bodily 
about them and you know the guy's wearing dirty clothes and he has these grotesque features and there are other other videos where they're it's like they're, the materials used are far more like bodily and that's something yeah. when you bring that into the art gallery we're really not sure what to do because everything that we've learned about what art is art is this lofty thing that is is you know it's above such things because it's all about thought and it's all about beauty whereas actually like all artists shit and piss <laughs> exactly exactly there's a there's a universality to it that's and and uh the, look i i loved i fucking love james joyce and uh the, you know in, in ulysses this idea of like he, he was you know ahead of his time in how he, he wrote about these bodily functions and the piss the shit and the cum the whatever you know anything that um any kind of effluent that can emerge from the body uh he was writing about it within ulysses and it's this I don't know, there's this book called like Rabelais in his world by uh, Bafkin, I think. And it had this idea of the carnivalesque and turning our base function into like elevating our base function into something uh, tinged with poesy or literary merit or artistic merit. And the kind of the, the, the inverse of like, you know, saying that should be degraded, debased, disgusting, mm -hmm becomes quite sanctified and it becomes quite sanctified because it's, it unites us. Uh, it unites every single one of us. And uh, no matter how deified uh, or elevated a position a person has in the world, they're, they're still, they're still bunging out of shit every, every, every now and again. It's just part of life. Because you seem to have a really strong foundation, like understanding of art and this like philosophical basis. What is your, like background with art uh so i did i i, did, I like i fucked up my gcse's um and i did a, a, a b tech uh, in art and design i did a b tech national in art and design and uh which was kind of transformative for me because i was so lonely that like i didn't have any friends in college uh, i used I actually used to look like what i like look like now i wore the same gray tracksuit every day i had a shaved uh, shaved head it's like i've re regressed actually so I've, this is i've just shaved my head recently but <laughs> um but i i was I had a really strong bond with the tutors uh, and and like i was really close to them mainly so they said you know other people in my age group I, this was about 2007 and uh, I said other people in my age group, you know, weren't people talking about like Chris Staver or, or Peter Cook or, you know, whatever. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I did, I, and I, would, I, I was a painter and an illustrator and I used to actually like sell paintings and stuff. But then I went to uni and I, in Portsmouth, I originally did a, a year of illustration and it just, it just, it just knocked like the art bug out of me. Like I haven't picked, I haven't created any art as in, you know, uh, like painting and I haven't created any visual art um, since, uh, since then, since I quit that, that course. And then I had a really staggered kind of like I had a year of just stasis where I was just signing on and doing drugs. And like, I was at the pub at like nine in the morning with the rest of the, the, you know, the, 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 the reprobates. Um, and I was just kind of floating, not really knowing what I wanted to do. And then I, because I had got enough credits, I was allowed to actually move on to English literature and creative writing. And then, but again, it was like, then I did a year of that. Then I took another year pause to just do drugs and then I went back again and then, and then finally it paid off. So I got a first and a, a student of the year, um, uh, uh, award. So, uh, but that was after I had to, you know, I had to stop drugs mm. and I had to move home so that I could commute from Essex to Portsmouth every cool. day for uni. Uh, because I just, I couldn't be, I couldn't be untethered uh, to, uh, to mm. I couldn't be, and I couldn't be immersed in a world where, you know, you have very, very easy access yeah. to drugs and stuff. So, um, uh, mm. yeah. So yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of, and I'm, I've always, I've always loved art. I've, it's always been a deep fascination for me. So. Mm. Uh, yeah. And for those who haven't seen your comedy, how would you say that this interest in like the visual and the interest in performance and the kind of bodily, how does that influence your actual performances? 
so I mean, if you actually look, I'm not doing anything. Um, uh, I'm not doing anything uh, particularly innovative in my stand up. I'm a storyteller. I'm a very confessional storyteller. The idea of confession and purging as a kind of ablution ritual, that's really deeply fascinates me. But then it, this is a, a sort of highfalutin way of talking about material that it is, you know, I'll, I'll use talk about washing old man's knobs. Like it's not, it's not anything that, tra I mean, if you want to be really poncy about it, you could talk about how transcendent it is in some ways, but the, the actual uh, stand up itself is pretty stupid and puerile and, mm. Uh, yeah, me talking just about drug abuse and, and elderly care and um, a, a, and that kind of thing. So uh, it, it's 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 what I was I had did a big talk with uh, Stuart Lee yesterday and and uh, uh, some uh, panel of brilliant academics who write about comedy and they were saying with with comedy like the the actual the question we were supposed to answer but not really was is comedy art? Obviously, the consensus on this panel was it is art. But we were saying, but it's best to pretend it's not because there's something about stand-up comedy and live performance that people just don't put it in the same league as the arts or the theatre. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a kind of like a more, rough, you know, like the Peter Brook rough space thing. But it's all the better for it because mm. under the cover of darkness where people think this is just silly knockabout pratting. This is just pratting on stage. You can then transmit uh, some uh, really weighty subject matter uh, without being, you know, being too obvious about it. Um, so, yeah, stand up comedy. I have my pretensions about comedy and about live performance, but I like to pretend I don't basically <laughs> but I think yeah. that's such a key point and like you mentioned about like washing an old guy's knob that in the art world if you if this was some kind of performance or if you're talking about this as a concept people in the art industries would talk about the fact that like you say it's about facing your you know fa facing an, an inevitable future and it's about masculinity and it's about mm -hmm. returning to childhood and in comedy it's about the fact you're washing a knob, even if, yeah, yeah, even if fundamentally they're coming from the same idea, right? And you, like you say, comedy, um, and we see it now like a lot, far more, um, you know, comedy specials that are coming out have a real deep root to them, but we're pretending for it to be, you know, uh, the word I've, I've got is edible. But I don't think that's yeah. what the word I mean is. Accessible. Accessible, Accessible. yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. digestible. Is, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> but also edible. It, it's, <laughs> it's pretend that it's not about these things because we have to have some space to relax. Whereas I don't think anyone feels particularly relaxed in an art gallery or particularly relaxed in a discussion about art because, it, like we said before, it's meant to be this big philosophical thing. And even though comedy does that, comedy plays with that under the guise of we're just having some fun in a pub you know on, on like a little little yeah. stage underneath a club even if what you're getting at are those really big topics like like you deal with yeah a hundred percent that's exactly it and and uh that that i think that's why i've always i i think that's why i've always found my my place in comedy my, my i mean my shared currency with my i've had I've got three mates who i've had since i was born uh mm. we've just we became mates as babies uh we we met up with each other as babies and we're like i'm, I'm feeling this other baby's energy we're, <laughs> we're all good babies together <laughs> so and we've just continued that friendship um and uh but yeah there's also the thing of like i do i i do, I do have pretensions i'm I'm a working class Essex boy, um, and I've uh, have I, you know I had, I had just a normal education. Just went to like I, so much so that I just I only call it normal school. So I don't know what the other tiers of schools actually are. Like people say private, and I don't and I don't really know what is what to be honest. So I've had that kind of background, and uh, I've overcompensated by sort of being a voracious reader because I'm worried about there's going to be uh, judgment because I talk in this bastardized Essex accent uh, in a kind of colloquial way. But uh, so I do have those pretensions, but um, I, you know, my, I, my dad would 
take the piss out of me if I talk too wanky or too poncy about something. Mm. So uh, it, when I'm in a, a, a comedy space, we're obviously hyper aware of like, don't get too arty farty about this. Uh, and so I'm probably more comfortable there because I have been in rarefied arty spaces. I'm not saying they're all like that, by the way, mm. but uh, you know, what, you know, we know that is part of the art world. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm very interested in what people have to say and how they speak, but it's, I don't feel fully at ease in that world. So, uh, mm. which is maybe a way, maybe a reason I kind of diverged away from it. Um, uh, or I could have done the like enfant terrible thing of like, yeah, I'm rough, rough shoe working <laughs> class boy in the art yeah. world. But uh, I just, yeah, I just, I would always gravitate towards comedy. So I love it. The problem is like, I went to a very normal school, but unfortunately having this accent means, <laughs> means that no one at any point is surprised that I did a history of art degree. <laughs> and it means I can get away with the fact that actually I really don't like reading. I've hardly read anything, but if I can say it in this voice, people will go, I'm sure that she knows what she's saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> lucky to get away with it. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to talk to me today. It's been really, really brilliant. Could you uh, let us know where it's best to follow you and keep up to date with what you're doing? Of cool. course. Uh, yeah, fa- uh, thank you as well. It's been a really oh. lovely chat. And uh, yeah, so um, Twitter at uh, Pope Lonergan. I've got a podcast as well, which is Pope Lonergan is Plimin and Lompin. Uh, which you can find out as one of uh, Stuart Lee's uh, lockdown recommendations, which is very kind of him. And yeah, I'm writing a book for Penguin, which will be, I mean, it's going it probably won't be out till 2022 yet, but um, yeah, that, that'll come out eventually. So yeah, that's, uh, they're sort of good places to find me. You can follow Pope in the ways written below. As per usual, you can follow me at Verity Babs Art on Instagram. And please do make sure you give us a subscribe and all the rest, and I will see you next time.